are here with live with Paul Cruz. That's a good fish live uh, Monday night here at Bud's Bait in, in Joplin. We do this every Monday. So, so Paul Cruz from Neosho, Missouri, uh, on February 23rd caught a 34 pound, 10 ounce brown trout out of Lake Tanicomo in the Vince L. Frank tournament. And Paul, I know you ran. We've we've got a couple of rehearsals here through this, but <laughs> um, what what is, what is your connection with the Vince L. Frank tournament? I know you got a really deep personal connection with that tournament. Uh, Vince is a old friend, a fishing buddy. Passed away several years ago, brain cancer, and uh, uh, another mutual friend, Phil Lilly, that owns Lilly's Landing, uh, created the tournament in honor of, of Vince, because he was a he was a great friend of. of Bills and many of the other of it, many others of us also, including my fishing partner in the tournament, Jim Rayfield. He lives in Salem. He was uh, connected to Vince long before I was. He was his dorm parent in college. So Jim and I fish the tournament every year that, that Phil puts on and uh, have a great time. It's a great tournament. Really, uh, if anybody wanted to do something fun and uh, fish, it, it's and you've obviously had a lot, of, great deal of success with it. Last year you got the big brown trout as well, which was what eight pounds, six ounces, eight, eight six. Yeah. So an eight six last year, and now a thirty four pound, ten ounce brown. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> ridiculous. That's pretty yeah. crazy. And yeah. you know we all know Lake Tanicomo's got big fish like that, but you know you back to back years you've had great success in this tournament. We have, uh, I, I almost embarrassing success. It's. Uh, catch the big brown trout, not only the last two years in a row, but skip one year, then the year before that, my partner caught, also caught the big brown trout. So we've won the big brown trout three of the last four years that we've fished, I believe it is. Unless I'm getting my math messed up. Yeah, and so February 23rd, uh, we kind of heard about the conditions. It was really windy, wasn't it? Uh, the morning started out rainy and, and foggy and misty. But that gave way to sunshine and strong winds. Yeah, very strong. And when you're throwing light line, uh, trout fishing, wind can be kind of tough on conditions and feeling it and everything like that. So um, you did get to fish uh, out of a new boat, right? This was kind of the inaugural adventure out of a new boat. So tell us a little bit about your new boat. Well, I've uh, had the same boat for I think 14 years, and I've been wanting to. Uh, Traded off. I, I had an idea to wait, but I went ahead and did it. I just pulled the trigger and got this new uh, low aluminum uh, fishing boat. And uh, this was the first time I'd taken it fishing, yeah. believe it or not. And uh, it's a great way to break it in. <laughs> had a great big live well, two of them actually. And, and the fish, the, the, the brown trout barely fit in there. I had to turn it sideways and kind of fit it in there for it to go in. But once it was in there, it was comfortable. I, you know, almost. <laughs> it's about as comfortable as a 34 pound 10 ounce yeah. trout could be in a live well. Yeah. So <laughs> let's get into your tackle and your presentation and all that. Um, I know you brought your rod and reel here with me. and uh, So there were shad coming through the dam. Uh, we heard that about a week before they were, and they were hitting on white jigs and stuff like that. You caught your big fish on an eighth ounce PJ's jig in sculpin color. And do you have that jig with you? Actually, I've got it right here on the back oh. of my hat. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's just kind of a, I don't know if it's too far from yeah, the camera. we can take it right up there. There you go, camera. It's a eighth ounce sculpin color, olive drab color. Real nice jigs. And it's my personal favorite for trout fishing. I've used this jig almost uh, or one the same color almost entirely in these trout tournaments that I fished in over there. And it seems to catch a lot of fish. So. I'd say so. Yeah. And PJ's jigs is kind of cool because they their mission, you know, I kind of looked them up after this, and I was, I'm sure a bunch of people did and went and looked at PJ's jigs. And, you know, they're hand-tied uh, by women locally and by women in small rural vi villages in Central and South America. So that's kind of cool. Um, cool. And I didn't even know that before I looked them up. but. You know, they're providing work for those that may not have it otherwise, so that's pretty cool. Um, so we kind of talked about why you chose Sculpin over White, because that's kind of one of my questions, because there was Shad coming through. Most people are going to be throwing White, but it goes back to what we've talked about a lot of times. That's your confidence color, right? Yeah, it, it kind of is like yeah. that. Uh, Phil told me of Sculpin color 
originally, and, and Dwayne Doty, uh, another fellow that is a guide over there, he uh, recommends it highly. So I kind of just went with it originally several years ago, and if it catches fish, uh, you probably shouldn't change. It's caught <laughs> two pretty big it. fish. It has now, yeah. So let's talk about what rod you got. What do you got here? Okay, the rod that I was using, it's in two pieces now. It's a, a rod that I just bought, and it's a St. Croix uh, seven foot trout series light action. Okay. Neat rod, really nice rod. I love it. And uh, the reel is a president, uh, fluker president. And we talk about line. You were throwing four pound test, right? Right. And we were using what kind of Bass Pro Excel? Is that what you said? Yes, four pound test uh, in green uh, Bass Pro Excel line. Yeah, so it was monofilament, guys. It wasn't that fluorocarbon stuff that all you guys talk about. It was monofilament, which you know I'm a big believer in. Four pound monofilament got a 34 pound 10 inch trout in. I'm just saying. <laughs> so um, let's get a little rundown of the day. So. How had your day been going before you caught the big fish? It was going well. Yeah. We we were catching some fish. We had our eight fish in the boat as quickly as any tournament we'd ever fished in. And we had some fairly decent rainbows in there. So we were, we were pretty pumped the way the morning went. Uh, as the morning wore on though, we stopped, you know, our, our catch started slowing down. We weren't catching the fish in the numbers or the size. So that's about the time we decided change and go way up the lake where we caught the ground current. Yeah. So cast a catch of this record fish, you know, what area of the lake were you fishing? I mean, you said up the lake, what kind of area were you fishing? Well, in the tournament, you have to declare where you're going to fish because there's lake rules. You can either fish above Fall Creek, which is the trophy area, which is the trophy area. Then you get to keep only what is in the slot limit, which really limits your ability to keep a lot of fish. So uh, Dwayne said we ought to fish down, so that's what we always do. Yeah. And, uh, we, we fished below Fall Creek, and uh, we went up probably a couple hundred yards below Fall Creek, shut the motor off, we were making our first drift when I hooked the, the ground trail. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so when you hooked it, I mean, I know this is kind of hard because it, you know, it, it was probably just like a blur, honestly, with the adrenaline and everything. So when you hooked this fish, what was going through your mind? Well, <clears throat> I just caught a rainbow trout, and uh, when this fish hit, it felt just like the, you know, the small rainbow trout that I just caught. It was a tap. I set the hook, and it immediately came to the surface and splashed a little bit. And I thought, hmm, it feels a little bit better, but it's kind of hard to tell right away. And then I thought, well, it does feel a little better. Then the fish swam by the boat, and I got a look at it, and. Uh, I thought it's a really nice fish. It probably weighs four or five pounds. <laughs> four or five pounds. Yeah. So honest, that that's what I thought I saw. It was really quick, but uh, water, uh, the refraction, it really affects the way uh, things appear underwater. I guess it did for me that at that moment anyway. So you probably didn't think it was probably going to be a twenty to twenty-five minute fight when when you saw the fish swim by. If you're thinking. Hey, this is a four or six pound fish. Still a big fish. Could win you a tournament. Oh, we were, we <laughs> were highly excited. Yeah, yeah, we were pumped. And uh, I told Jim, get the net, get the net. And uh, so he got the net. He was standing by immediately, you know, thinking I'm going to bring this fish to the side of the boat. And I was planning on it. But uh, about a minute into the fight, the fish woke up. He realized he was hooked. And then it just tore me up. I couldn't do anything with the fish. All I could do was hang on. I, I put my reel on back reel instead of using the drag. And I couldn't, at, at times I couldn't back reel fast enough. He was stripping drag as I was back reeling. Uh, and he was in control. All I was doing was just trying to keep him out of a mess, like getting under the boat, which he did numerous times. At one point, you know, had me down with my whole rod in the water except for the reel. And it was down between the the bow of the boat and the trolling motor it was in a bad position. I thought it was over at yeah. that point. I mean, it was, the drag was just buzzing really good and, and I'm down here and I said, Jim, help, please get the trolling motor up. So he <laughs> came up there and he's standing across my leg, lifts the trolling motor and I had to hand my rod under the water and got it with the other hand on the other side of the boat and continued on with it. And from that point on, I was able to keep the boat positioned using the trolling motor to, to keep him from getting under the boat yeah. quite so bad, but he did run 
all over the lake, clear to the other side, and back to the middle, then kind of back to that side, then back all the way across the lake. And I was trying to, you know, keep other boats from getting between me and the fish because there's quite a bit of boat, fast boat traffic, and it's swift. Uh, and the wind is really blowing. It's kind of tough conditions, but I just, you know, just tried to use all the skill I could and prayed that my line wouldn't break. And uh, then he got back over to the other side of the lake, swam under some docks, and I was thinking, oh, here it goes, you know. But uh, I just tried to hold the rod tip down, and we made it past the docks, and he was still on. So thankfully, uh, <clears throat> we got behind the docks, kind of in a little bit of dead water, somewhat dead water, and that's where he finally yeah. tired out. And, and uh, it's a good thing, because my arm was about wore out. I was really having a hard time judging how hard I was pulling, because it was a lengthy fight. I've, I've said several times, I've caught bigger fish, but I've never caught a fish that's harder to get in. Yeah. Uh, because of the full contest and the size of the fish, which I, I didn't know the size of it until it came to the surface right by the boat. We got it in the net and lifted it in, and I could see it was just, it was a blimp, it was massive. Yeah, I'm, I liked in one of the articles I read when you were describing it, you, you said he woke up and then he was a complete boss. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's yeah. just like, and that feeling of, you have no control over something in nature. That that's just a really cool feeling. And I remember you talking about it at dinner tonight. You know those boats going through. Those boats don't know that you have a big fish on. <laughs> as yeah. far as they know, you're just out there in the middle drifting. Yeah. So weaving through boats, you got wind. You got your trolling motor. He went over to the docks. I mean, it was just crazy. Very fortunate. <laughs> Very fortunate to get him in. Yeah, I just tried to stay close to him and do what I could, and finally he tired out. I guess I just outlasted the fish yeah. is what, what it amounts to. And you estimated the fight at what? About 20 minutes. I think. About 20 minutes. I'm not sure. That that cruelly part of it is a blur. Yeah. But judging by the last time I looked at my clock and the time the tournament ended, I think it was about 20 minutes. If you watch it, when he gets the fish in, his buddy nets it, and you just see Paul just... <sighs> So yeah. that's sigh of relief. It was a sigh of relief. You better believe it. <laughs> and just, I, I think, you know, I've never caught a fish that big, obviously, but at the same time, it's just like you're in total disbelief at how big this fish is. And we, we found out later he was probably, what, eight years old, seven or eight years old? Uh, that's what I was told. Yeah. So, and you, and you talk a little bit about the legend of Frank. The legend of Frank. Well, <laughs> Because I'm new to this story. The legend of Frank was unknown to me before <laughs> I caught the fish, but the folks there around Lily's Landing had been seeing this fish under the dock, you know, presumably there to eat the, the discarded carcasses of the fish that are clean. And they even got pictures of him and video, video uh, underwater video camera footage of this fish. And, and you know, a lake, it's a big lake. Uh, I would not have believed that they knew what they were talking about. That's but, exactly what I thought. But then I saw the video. <laughs> I looked at this fish in the live well, and it had a kind of a distinctive dorsal fin. Mm -hmm. And he showed me the pictures and the videos, and I'm <laughs> they made a believer out of me. It's the same fish. They knew about it for, I guess, three years before I ever. I didn't even know. That, you know, I didn't even know that they knew about it. Yeah, they I thought the fish. There's just so much that goes into this story that. Uh, it's just really crazy. You know, you're fishing out of a brand new boat. You, you catch a 34 pound trout, that's one thing. And then, you know, they've been seeing this fish under the dock and just the way you landed it, it was it was crazy. So you get the fish in, you understand it's huge. And how big did you think it was at the time? Well, uh, let me go back just okay. a second. Uh, the, the place I caught the fish was, uh, I'm guessing maybe a couple of miles from where they'd seen it too. Oh. So it had gone upstream that far. Uh, when we got the fish in the net and lifted it out of the water, it seemed like it doubled in size. <laughs> uh, both ends of the fish stuck up out of the net, and it was real deep across the stomach. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's a, probably a 20-pound fish, yeah. is what I thought. And, and bad guess. Well, was, when, they get, when they get that big, I mean, it's, it's hard to tell. So we decided we'd quit the tournament. We quit fishing right then and go check that fish in, and we thought our chances were very, very good. Uh, <laughs> chances were pretty solid. So we got there, and the folks there at Lily's did make kind of a quick weighing 
excuse me, of the, the fish just to, for the tournament purposes. And it hit 33 something on their scale with the net on it and the basket, which it wouldn't fit in. And, and then we put it in a recirculating tank to try to, you know, do what's best for the fish. And immediately upon getting in that tank, it uprighted itself and was, looked like it was doing good. So, we, so uh, go ahead. So, um, you know, after we get it in, what was the process of you got it on the bank? Did, I, I saw the biologist there. We've all seen that video. Okay. Did you, you took it to the hatchery, correct? Uh, well, from the tank that I just described, yeah. there was an award ceremony which had to be gone through for the rest of the anglers. And we went through that, and they served a really nice meal there, which is great, great fun and great food. And after that, uh, Phil's truck had a stop tank in the back of it filled with lake water, and we got the trout in the net, put it in the stop tank, put a lid on it and took off to Shepherd of the Hills Fish Hatchery, I think about a five mile drive. <clears throat> and the, the fellows from the state were waiting there with the scales calibrated out and uh, got the fish in the net, and put it in the, uh, in the weighing mm -hmm. basket or whatever it is and they weighed it officially and took the fish immediately and put it in another uh, aerated a lake water stop tank that was on the back of another pickup truck and drove it back down to the, the ramp and uh, that's where we took a few pictures and released it. The link had a girth on it real quick. I don't know if you want to uh, take him here on the tailgate and try to get that real quick. Yeah, we could maybe get the girth with him in the tank. Yeah, you can because I already got it. I mean, I got it once. All right. 40, 30, yeah, 40, 40 inches long, 30 inches girth. Okay. Right, but I mean, what well, do you have for girth? No, nah, go ahead. You're good. I got it right at 27. Oh, 27. All right. Dang, that was a little off. <laughs> oh, dang, I got. What were you using, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> I just had this. We get a link on him. We need to lay him flat to get us in the lane. Tailgate. He's fine, yeah. He's yeah. fine. And we'll want to get a couple real good pictures. I do. That's awesome, man. And so you said I, I read one of the articles and you just said all you really wanted from the fish was a picture. You know, so your your plan was to release this fish the whole time, which is awesome. Because like we talked about before, you know, when fish get this big Oftentimes you don't even get the chance to release them because they just don't make it after a fight like that. But you had that opportunity, so that's really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't uh, have any other aspirations other than to get a picture to win the tournament. We were just trying to place, so, yeah. but we were fortunate enough to win, and then uh, it just seemed to me like the right thing to do would be to let it go. Uh, if you want to eat a trout, keep a small one in Yeah, there's plenty of stock trout in there. There are, yeah, it's, it's, a real, it's a real good lake, it's yeah. a real fishy lake. So I, I remember looking back at my notes, he beat the re previous record by six pounds, and which was also caught at Lake Tanicomo by Scott Sandusky in 2009. So Scott's probably thinking I had a giant, and then you beat him by six pounds. Little did we know he's probably been feeding on fish carcasses. So um, this fish was released, and, I, and we talked about this on the phone, about how how this is truly kind of a rarity situation. I want to read a quote from one of the articles I read because I thought this was great and then I'll let you kind of respond to that. Um, he said, there is just so little chance of this happening. You have to have a little blessing from the Lord to get something like that. And I feel like that's what happened. Why me? There's thousands of people who fish that lake more than me. I fish it once a year. To be at that spot where that fish was, it can't be a coincidence. It had to be a little providence. So when we were talking about that, you know, we're all about faith family fishing here. That's a good fish. And we talked about this on the phone where you're just like, some things that happen in life, if you don't believe, you, you consider it a coincidence. But if you do believe, you're just like, you know. So is that kind of what happened in this situation? Uh, well, for me personally, that's exactly the way I see it. Yeah, it, uh, it has to be, there has to be some providence in something that small of a chance of happening, actually happening to me. Um, you know, you look at that lake, it's, I don't know how many miles long, but there's 
billions of cubic feet of water that you could fish and my jig just happened to be where this fish was and uh, it's that way in a lot of different outdoor activities that you know I love to hunt and fish and I, I think that you know the Lord does bring you together with a blessing like that I know you know it's his it's his heart to bless bless his kids and I think that's what it was he just dropped it on me and, and I'll take it it was great <laughs> But the chances of it happening, I don't know what the chances would be. It would probably be one in 50 billion or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. I can't imagine. <laughs> there may be bigger fish out there. I don't know. Who knows? Nobody's proven yet. So. Yeah, but faith, faith has just played, I know it's played a big role in my life uh, as far as the outdoor goes. And I got to hear a lot of stories with him tonight over dinner about how faith has had an impact uh, in his life in the outdoors as well. So that was really cool. Um, so... Do we have any questions well, from people here or online? Online, there's a question of Jonathan Aldridge, who you might know, and he's asking, are you going to fall going to retire after catching that beast? <laughs> Not from fishing. <laughs> no. I might retire from work, but uh, I love to fish, I love to hunt, and I, I hope to carry it on for a long time. It's, uh, well, I mean, back-to-back -back years, you kind of ate. Well, you didn't, but you've been a part of an eight yeah. and a thirty-four pound trout. I mean, yeah. some people don't catch one of those in their entire life. So, um, We're I don't know. You might have to go to the casino tonight or something <laughs> and, and put some in a slot machine. Oh, so, does there anyone might be a better chance? Yeah. Does anyone have? Is there any other questions on there that anyone has? So, are you, you almost always using four pound line, or do you use some other? different you know when you're trout fishing do you use some other you know depending on the in trout fishing that's what i've always used i did have uh some six pound on some other other rigs that i was using uh with different kind of baits like if you throw a, a plug or a spoon i had a little heavier line but i was using four pound test for most of my you know fishing because most of your fishing is cast in the yeah. jig and so about 90 percent four pound test yeah and one question I forgot to ask, how deep of water were you fishing when you hooked the big one? I think the fish was in about two feet of water where he bit. Uh, he swam by the boat, and I could see the bottom real clearly. Uh, it might have been a little deeper, you know, because I thought the fish was yeah. <laughs> two feet long and about four or five pounds, so it probably was deeper, but the water's really clear. It's hard to tell. But he was up there not far from the bank where he hit, probably within 10, 12 feet of the bank. And that's one of the craziest things, I think, like... You know, when I go to Tanicomo, most of the time I honestly just blow by the shallow water. I do and too. <laughs> and uh, you blew by there, and there happened to be a 34 pounder just chilling there. Yeah. So he stopped us. <laughs> Any other questions on Facebook? Good question of what was second place in <laughs> the second place weight? I think it was okay. a little over nine pounds for the tournament. Ours was 40 pounds with the fish. <laughs> We blew the top off that. We talked about too at dinner. Like, what if, like, for instance, what if I fish the tournament and I caught a ten-pound brown, and I'm thinking I got a huge fish, we're gonna win this thing, and then you bring yours in, it's thirty-four pounds. So I can't even imagine. I'm glad that didn't I'm happen. Glad it didn't happen too. But I would feel genuinely bad. <laughs> Whoever caught a big trout like that then to get smashed. That would be, yeah. That would be rough. But that's fishing, you know. I mean, yep. that that record could fall. It mm -hmm. might have already fallen. Uh, records are made to be broken, so yeah. somebody will someday. And Another question, what knot you tie on the net? Uh, I like to use, where I tie my jig on, I use a, a double improved cinch knot, a tri lead knot, go through the island twice, yeah. mm -hmm. twist it, go back through both loops. My partner uses a Palomar knot. I guess they're both pretty good. <laughs> I just don't know how to tie them. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, Tom Lloyd, the owner of Jack Bates, yep. asked, uh, he must not have been on, what was the bait of choice? So can you show that again yeah. to the What's camera? That? So he caught it on an eighth ounce PJ's jig sculpin color or olive. So look at that thing. But, um, and you chose eighth ounce, I'm assuming, because of the current and the wind. Definitely, yeah. So. I like to throw a 16th ounce. Yes. That's my weight of choice. But because of the wind, given the fits, I, I went with the 8th ounce. Yeah. 
I was able to feel it sometimes when I jig my rod mm -hmm. tip. A lot of times there was nothing there because it'd be a big loop in my line from the wind. But, uh, just moments before the fish struck, I could feel I could feel my jig when I twitched it. And, uh, like I said, he felt just like the little rainbow I just mm -hmm. caught until I got the rod bent on it. Then it became obvious pretty quick he was better. So. So how has this whole experience just kind of been really cool for you? I mean, we were stoked to, that you came down here, so we greatly appreciate that. And I know you've had a lot of interviews talking to a, talking to a billion people. So kind of tell us about how this whole experience has kind of changed your life a little bit. Well, I have never had anything like this happen to me before. I've never won a door prize or anything like that. It's just really been fun uh, to get to meet a lot of people, talk to a lot of people. Uh, share my story it's been fun I've enjoyed it every bit of it it's been it's been a real blessing so uh, and it uh, it's, it's made uh, wherever I've gone lately people have noted oh you're the guy who caught the crowd huh? yeah. <laughs> that was me so it's been fun that's all I can say I, I've really enjoyed it great experience yeah. <laughs> yeah is there any other questions yeah Grant Rankin's asking uh, did you mix up your baits that day, or did you pretty much stick with that all day? I fished uh, the jig most all the day long. Uh, I did a spoon a little bit with a spoon. I like that, because that's the way I like to fish, too. You know, those marabou jigs, that's just kind of my passion. That's my way that I love to catch them. Um, so that's kind of your comfort zone, it's your confidence area, so. Daryl yeah. asked if you plan on getting a replica mount made. Uh, yes, there is a replica being worked on. Uh, Do you remember the final dimensions? Yes, it was uh, 38 inches long by the state's uh, tape measure, 27 inches around, which is you know, the size of a, it's bigger than my four-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> which I like to think of it in that aspect. Uh, its tail, I didn't measure its tail, but I'm sure it was probably about close to eight inches tall, the tail. And its mouth was gigantic. And the back of the fish was kind of humped. It was really a unique looking fish. Pretty color too. And it's released. So it's still out there to yeah. get even bigger or someone else to catch. I got, got, I got a question for you. Now, it's probably a little early, but has Bass Pro or Cabela's even approached you yet? I have spoken with, with them on the phone. Because you're, you're going to be in that Hall of Fame up there. You realize that, right? <laughs> okay. All right. As long as I can keep catching fish. <laughs> I think you can do that. Oh, yeah. Do you think the whole experience of it, I mean, I know it's, it's got to be kind of surreal, but was it enhanced by the fact you were in a tournament with your peers? Oh yes, yeah. greatly. Yeah, that, that uh, the tournament deal was was really cool to be able to win that uh, two years in a row. Uh, feel real fortunate about that. Uh, I'm trying not to let it become in my thinking like it's our birthright <laughs> to win it because it, it can sure go the other way. There's a lot of good fishermen there that uh, are a lot more skilled than I am and than we are that fish that lake all the time. And, for us to have gotten it twice in a, in a row is just really special. Can you imagine how many people will be throwing olive sculpted jigs <laughs> next tournament? Throw away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the jig that I like to fish with about 90% of the time in that tournament and trout fishing. It's, it's worked. And worked the, the board, or the weigh-in board, what did it say about your total weight? <laughs> Well, it, it had the big brown listed at 33-ish, <laughs> ish, because I it wasn't a real official weight. Now I think they, they realized they probably wouldn't have to worry too much about who had the, the big brown, <laughs> and our, our total weight was a 40. So yeah, it was that was fun to look at. Barely snuck it by, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Daryl does ask, was your hook bent at all when it was done? No, no, the jig was. Perfectly intact, no straightening whatsoever. So those real PJ's jigs got a good hook on them. They do have a real good you hook. You said they have a little thicker shank, right? Yeah, I looked at it after I caught the fish, and it has a—it's—it's it's better than the jigs that 
that uh, my partner and I mm -hmm. pour and tie. Here he he pours them and ties them for me, and uh, it's got a little thicker shank, and it seems like it's a little better quality steel. Have, have you reached out to BJ's yet? They reached out to me. I, I was not aware of BJ's. I just bought the jig at Lily's Landing. Okay. And, uh, they're the ones that I guess told BJ's about it. Sure. PJ sent me a nice little letter, congratulatory oh, yeah. letter for using their jigs and a few little gifts. So that was nice. How much, how much is that jig worth now, you reckon? <laughs> I'm going to keep this jig. I think I'll not fish for this jig again. I'm going <laughs> to hang it up on my bedroom wall and just look at it every once in a while. I try to remember the day. Right. And you put it in the replica in the, in yeah. the fish's mouth. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I think that looked really good. <laughs> Jewelry. That's a good place. Yeah. So is there any other questions, guys? We're, we're kind of starting to wrap up here, but if you guys have any questions for Paul Cruz, just caught the uh, uh, state record brown trout, 34 pounds, 10 ounces, beat the last record by six pounds. So um, we really appreciate him being on here. And if there's any other questions, now's the time to, to go ahead and fire away. Otherwise, he's got to get back to Neo Show. So. Just to ask him, did you been, been talk to St. Croix? Uh, I went on their website and uh, sent them a, you know, contact us. I sent them an email. <laughs> tell them I have a neat story for them. <laughs> Just a little neat story. But I haven't heard back from them. Yeah, so. Daryl will get on that. Yeah. Daryl's, Daryl knows St. Croix. Maybe he can make it happen for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Daryl can do it. Yeah. Any other questions? That's it. Okay. Um, well, guys, we thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Uh, That's a Good Fish Live. We do this every Monday night here at Bud's Bait in Joplin. Uh, Paul Cruz, we really appreciate you coming on the show. It was awesome getting to eat dinner with you and, oh, and you. hear your story. And, uh, you know, not only did he catch a heck of a trout, he's, he's a really humble guy um, and just really, truly embraced uh, the catch uh, for what it was instead of, you know, I, I, I understand it's probably pretty easy to catch a fish this size to be look at me that that's the total opposite of what he's done with this he's he's a really humble guy from what i've heard and and really just he, the lord blessed you didn't he he did i i have to give him the, the credit yeah. for it. uh there's no way i could have gone out and planned to catch a yeah. 34 pound yeah. trout i i wouldn't even dream of it but uh it happened so so I, i'm thankful yeah, so maybe we'll have to go crappie fishing with you down there at Grand sometime. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I love it. Yeah, because that's his niche. He's been catching crappie down there at Grand, and oh, yeah. uh, between that and catching state record trout, he's been catching a few crappies. So, uh, guys, <laughs> make sure work. <laughs> he works some. Really good. But make sure you tune in next week, guys. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. We're doing a big giveaway when we get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, We've, we've had a great response on Facebook lately, and, and it's because of incredible guests like this that we put on every Monday. So once again, we really appreciate it, and thanks for tuning in, guys.